What's happening? This is Avadon, and welcome to another episode of Beast for Breakfast. Today, I am joined by the Chill Squad homie, repping Dipset, Chip Santana. Nah, I'm playing Chips and Sticks. What's going on, man? Nah, I'm not. What's going on, man? How you living? What's good, fam? How's everything going on? I'm I'm chilling. Uh, you know, feeling feeling good. You know, That's feeling good. Fair. How you been? Feeling good, feeling great. No complaints, man. Really. So, this is a long time coming because it's like we had everyone on here. Basically, I think we had the entire chill chill squad on here except for NX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, NX is the uh, is the last one. Which NX, when he finished school, he more than likely will be on here because he has a lot of game development. He could probably teach us, so that'll be a, definitely a good yeah. conversation. But um, before we get started, who is Chips and Sticks? We can tell the people. Oh man, Chips and Sticks. I'm just a, a a normal guy that's you know that's funny from time to time that loves to gives you you know the straight up honest reviews and impressions on on video games and if i can help you out i'm gonna help you out with some tips and tricks with you know and then just that's pretty much it you know i just love video games and want to talk about it with with the world dope 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 okay cool so you well before i even get to that question what got you into youtube in the first place uh part of it is you and uh um, what <laughs> yeah part of part of it part of it is you part of it is uh my my cousin alex uh shout out to alex man he's a he's a huge supporter of mine always always holds me down uh him and chris but uh alex was was the other the other part of it uh you know for for a long time right we were me and alex were talking about doing a youtube channel and just being ourselves like on on camera and talking about video games and uh showing the games we play and just clowning like straight up clowning that's all we wanted to do mm -hmm. um <laughs> but we couldn't we couldn't really do that part of it is because you know we're we're in a hypersensitive culture nowadays so our channel probably would have gotten banned the, <laughs> by the third episode so <laughs> that didn't really work out and then uh where you came along is uh you know back in what well, it was it's like a, a year or, or two years ago now right like i was i was in uh i mean i'm still in school but like i was i was writing blogs mm -hmm. and uh you know you would read them and other people would read them and then you know this is this is still like you know i'm not gonna say the, the early stages of your channel but like uh, you was you was already like on your way to to a thousand right yeah this this was two years ago in 2018 and you you wrote some good pieces which we're going to talk yeah. about later on in the show you wrote some really good pieces right so box. all of, so all of that started out as just a school project well yeah a school project because we had to submit uh we had to submit articles to our website every every week it was uh every two days because that's when we met for class we had to submit one every two days Mm -hmm. uh just to get our blogs rolling and then he cut it back to every uh thursday because the class was tuesdays and thursdays so we had to have something every thursday for him to grade every thursday he was looking at all of our blogs um he was reading everything and then one one week we had to go up and do a presentation on one of our blogs and the first blog that i did was uh how gamestop you know messed up my my chance at playing destiny 2 you know early and you know i, I blasted him in the article and, and he read it he was like this is good but you don't want to do this i was like what you mean he was like you don't want to blast companies like this and, and put it out there on public you can have a, you know an opinion and, and critique them but you don't want to blast them and, and just straight dump on them i was like nah man f game stop like this is me talking to my professor i was like nah man yo f game stop they 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 messed up my whole destiny 2 thing and blah 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 and they do this and they do that and he was just like it's a good article i'll give you full credit for it but don't do that again <laughs> so so i was like all right, all right, all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna blast people in my articles i'm just gonna i'm just gonna talk about you know the realness of it you know the realness of, of what happens you know in a video game industry and that's what that's what i wanted to talk about and then i had plans to to do a channel before this before chips and sticks with you know uh with alex and another one of my friends and that didn't really rock off right so 
uh that's when i was i was talking to you and i was like yo i want to do a channel but i don't know if, if i'm good enough to do it like solo and then he was like yo just do it like i did it you know what i'm saying i'm still doing it and you know x y and z and he was like yo just yo just do it i was like all right man f it i'm gonna do it so i was like yo what what name can i can i come up with and i'm saying that that's gonna stick so like i thought of a bunch of names and then my professor was like if you're gonna if you're gonna do a youtube channel research the name right make sure it's not taken if you find somebody on youtube with your name it's over and i was like i right, bet because there's also the reason why he's saying it's over is because this was this was a like a business class mm -hmm. so if you take the name right that somebody else that somebody else had already taken there's a, a chance there's a probability that they can sue you Mm -hmm. And if if your channel makes money, they can take all of that because it's who had it first. That's what it all boils down to, copyright. And I was like, all right, you know what? I can't take. I had I had some like good ones, and I didn't even know these channels like existed. I had uh, I had like so I'm a Pokemon fan, right? Obviously. So I was like, yo, Game Freak. Somebody got a Game Freak channel. I was like damn that ain't gonna work <laughs> and i was like uh i had i had another one i had another one it was good uh control freak there's an instagram page with that one i was like nah nah we can't use that um and i was just like yo my name i'm, I'm not gonna use my full name i'm not gonna go kanye west on a, on a joint and just throw my government out there <laughs> so i was like i was like yo you know what people call me this because of my name chips they always, you know what I'm saying? That's how I get them to remember my name. And I was like, yo, every time, like, I play a fighting game with Alex, we always be like, yo, get on the sticks, right? Sticks, fam, just C stick, analog stick. I was like, yo, sticks, chips and sticks. I was like, yo, I'm on to something. Nobody had it, so I took it. And then I, I you know, used that for the blog. I bought the, the, the domain name outright, like, I waited for for my paycheck to come and I just bought the name and started doing YouTube and then that's that's pretty much it from there. That's what's up. See, that was the first time I heard that story myself, guys. So it's pretty dope. And one thing I want to actually even um, say to you and for your credit is mm -hmm. you actually are on us and the rest of the chill squad about, you know, blasting on people and even going out there's been a few times that chips had to sit me down when i got upset yeah. with someone and i'm about to go off of people it was like nah man you can't do that like chips will be the the mediator or the chips will be the one like i'll be the listening. diplomatic one exactly and believe it or not as chill as i can be there's times where i could be where there have been times i've been a lot better now there have been times that i could be the hot-headed one and want you know let's go for let's go to war like oh my oh my god bro <laughs> So this is still while I was writing articles, right? And before mm -hmm. I came up with, uh, with the channel. And even before then, right? Before I started writing the articles, yo, Avedon would, would call me up, right? Like 12.30 at night. And I didn't have a problem with it because I'd, I'd normally be up that time anyway. Um, I had started I had started a new job. So like I worked night hours. So like I was getting used to it. So it was fine. And then, yo, he would call me up like 12.30, you know, 11.30, 12.30 at night. And then he'd be like, yo, I'm about to blast someone, so I'm like, whoa, 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 fam, whoa, <laughs> you don't want to do that yet, what happened, tell me the story, and then we, yo, we'd be up, like, just on the phone talking for mad long, talking about the whole situation of, of whatever happened, Yeah. and I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to talk him away from, from the ledge, like, yo, you don't, you don't want to jump out the window on this one, bro, like, it's not, it's not that deep, I'm saying, let them, the, the, the old saying is, let them hang themselves, right, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, that's what they did, Right, I was like, "Yo, I'm telling you, X, Y, Z is gonna happen. Just, just let let Tom take care of it, and then you know, Tom took care of it." And he was like, "Yo, you know what? He was right. He was right." So, Sometimes yeah. you, you didn't take the advice, but it was it was still yeah. fun to watch. We, we can we can say the same for both of us, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. We can say the same for both of us because it's ironic yeah. now. It's like you know. Like chips out, we we both had to do, do the same for each other. It's almost like yo, like yeah. so. It's like we we've, we've always looked out, and that's just kind of like how you can see the early stages of Chill Squad because it's almost taking that route. This is like before 
you know, you know, your player too. Nick came in the picture before Rob came in the picture. It's almost mm-hmm. like we had to learn. It's like, yo, because being from, I'll just say this: I'm not putting a, a negative stigma on New York, but being from New York, you, you, <laughs> you tend to have a way about yourself sometimes, the way you want, you tend to want, want to approach things, and sometimes it can come off as very aggressive. And yeah. I'm still learning. Not to be so aggressive with certain things. So right, nobody's perfect. Yeah. That's the that's the yeah. thing about about being human and, and being aware of your your growth process is that mm-hmm. you're always gonna grow. You're always gonna learn. Because if you're not growing, you're dead. You're stagnant, and then yeah, you're you're, you're dead. Like you, there's nothing there's nothing for you to gain. There's nothing for the world to gain by you just not not growing. So. Mm-hmm. But nah, um, definitely wanted to actually uh, chop up a little bit more about like the times that you've gotten to travel because I've traveled a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. but you've traveled more than me to these conventions. You've been yeah. to Comic Con, you've been to PAX West, you've been to Long Island Retro and too many games. Mm-hmm. How have going to these conventions, conventions rather, impacted you doing YouTube and you even... Um, just being a blogger and being a content creator in general it makes you more hungry and it makes you want to really connect with people because mm-hmm. um so when i started going to comic-con right i was going with my homie chris and um we've we've been going well at the time you know we we were like five years in right and it's crazy how, how time flies because we didn't even we didn't feel like it was five years so we we've, we've been doing that for like five years or whatever and you see the you see like all the different fans from comics to like shows like star trek uh different like different movies and even video games they have you know sometimes they'll have like a little video game section you see everybody coming together and you know enjoying you know what's on display and and what's being you know given back to the fans some of it some of it was like uh, uh and some of it was like really great and just doing that um you know you you kind of learn a lot about about people and then like how to approach somebody um for the the video game conventions that I've that I've gone to you know it's a lot of the times it's because you know it's part of networking you know when you do content creation you're you are an entrepreneur right so you have to go out there and make connections with different uh you know different content creators you have to make the connections with different uh developers that showcase their games and sometimes you'll run into you know ordinary people like us who like to play video games and who you know want to see what we have to offer you know so networking in in those three or with those three things in mind you know it has done a lot you know i mean we we've been to uh long island retro and Mm -hmm. you know we've we've mingled with uh you know like the likes of spawn wave and rgt uh, the homie Rax. That's the that's the first time I met Rax. That's the first time we all met Rax per, in right. person. Actually, well, well, I mean that's the first time I've met Rax. Period. Oh like, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't I didn't know homie at all. Like this is the first time I met him. Period. <laughs> so you know I hung out with him for like uh you know a day and a half. Well we we hung out with him for that for that Saturday, and then the Sunday I hung out with him for like half the day and then oh my God something bad happened and I was just like I'm going home. <laughs> um and then going to going to too many games you know that's the first time i met you know t belly and and the whole you know or you know a major part of the uh the retro gaming community like j love and linda gamer girl and Dahar gamer bros and uh really really awesome people and then also you know where we met uh jordan fringe um john austin from austin plays really cool dude you know, we just met like a whole bunch of people, you know, at the conventions that are also content creators. And then we've met a bunch of people that are, you know, game developers. We've played a, a few of their games and uh, I think you might have you might have showcased it mm-hmm. uh, because your footage got saved, luckily. And um, PAX. PAX is the first time I met, you know, the homies over at Sklobo. 
and um, they showed me around Seattle and you know what I'm saying treated me like family they are family at this point <laughs> and it's like I mean they, they've been family it was like it's like meeting brothers you know long lost brothers you know and yeah. PAX was a different experience because you you go there you're strictly for the games you gotta know what you wanna showcase or you know make content about and you gotta be there because it's not just like willy nilly and walking around and, and oh yeah let me get on this line and now nah, you gotta plan that out like a day ahead of time and, and just and just go for it. So it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely helped out a lot, you know, in terms of you know being on YouTube and you know uh, quite a few aspects. Nice, nice. So I wanted to um, actually, yeah, I want to ask like because you've been associated with Squobo for a minute. We had yeah. you know the opportunity to having them you know on the. Ch- on the showcast once or mm-hmm. twice, I wanted to ask, like, what were some of the the, the things that you've learned from them? Because they have they have a great um, marketing campaign that they have on Instagram, and I want to just to ask, like, what were some of the biggest things you have, you have taken from them with your relationship with them? Oh my God, it's it's the marketing, bro. They're you know they're they're an up and coming uh, clothing brand, which is basically uh, you know streetwear meets uh, nerdum. You know, nerd nerd culture, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I've never seen anybody you know do that before. So, you know, I, I've always talked to to Nico. He's he's uh, you know one of the uh, the brains behind Sklobo, Him and John. Um, so I, I would always talk to Nico. That's that's who I was talking to. You know, on Instagram. That's I met him. I forgot. It was a uh, they they posted something. Um, and I was, you know, searching through hashtags just on Instagram, whatever, just for like video game stuff. Cause I was like, you know, there's a lot of toy photography with video games, and I was like, oh, this is cool. So I found um, a giveaway that they did for the Sonic Amiibo, and I was like, yo, let me just enter it. I never entered one of these competitions. I didn't expect to win at all. I was like, yeah, let me just like, comment. And um, I followed their page because I was like, "Oh, this, they got they got clothes too, so that's that's dope." And then they hit me up. They was like, "Yo, you won." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "You sure?" They was like, "Yeah, bro. You're like, like, yo, you, you won. Sure. And where can we send the the amiibo and blah blah blah?" And then so, like, I, I just started talking to them, you know, a lot through Instagram. Like, we was always talking on Instagram, and you know. And then uh, I met them. I met them at Emerald City Comic Con for the first time. That's where I met them. And then I didn't. I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them that um that I was I was going. Or, or yeah, at the first at first I didn't tell them that I was going. I was like, nah, nah, that's, that's gonna be that's gonna be kind of kind of weird if I just pop up. And then I don't know like where they're at. Like I'm gonna be searching the whole search the the whole floor, you know, for for Sklobo. And I don't know where they're at, so I gotta, you know what I'm saying? So I told them, I was like, all right, um, yo, I managed to get the time off work. I'm gonna head out there, but I'm not sure what day I'm gonna be able to land because, you know, I still gotta get the, the you know, the tickets for the flight. He was like, all right, cool. Anytime you come out here, just hit us up and then we can, we can link up. I was like, all right, cool. So I got out there, I think it was a, a Thursday. It was the day before they set up because, you know, conventions are always friday saturday sunday um so i got there when it was when it was setting up i got there like mad early and i didn't know what to do in seattle i was just walking all around downtown not knowing my (laughs) my rear end from my elbow and i was just like i don't know where i'm going so i'm gonna grab some food grab some drinks and go back to my airbnb and sleep so i did that knocked out and i Mm -hmm. woke up uh it was friday so i went over there and it was like, yo, are you coming today or 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 tomorrow? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there today. Cause I, you know, I was there Thursday. And I was like, I'm I'm just not sure what time I'm gonna be there. Cause I gotta like I'm still I still wanna like, you know, tour the city and blah blah blah. Whatever. So they had posted the show like their uh the show floor and, and the, the booth, like the uh the floor plan. Mm-hmm. And they they posted where they where they were gonna be at. So I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop up on them, just surprise, right? So I'm, I'm looking at the floor plan, and I go over there, 
And it's like they kind of saw me from the distance, right? And I could see Nico's face. He was like, is that Chips? <laughs> so, I, so I was like, yo, I saw him, but like, it's too late for me to stop him. Like, yo, is that you? So <laughs> I walked over and I was like, what's up, guys? It's Chips. And it was just like one big, like, celebration and like, uh, and just overall embracement, you know, of each other. And I was there with with Nico. I was there with John. I was there with another one of our homies. Uh, uh, we call him we call him Chef because he's actually a chef. Uh, with Chef, uh, Nico's mom, and then like yo, they it was like long lost brothers, and then uh, yeah, and then so like you know I was I was always talking about like, yo, how do you how do you do this? How do you do that? um nico is like a, a mastermind with like excel sheets and data you know what i'm saying john is, is also another creative and you know you combine that with you know everything that they that they know because i, I don't remember the name of uh the university out in seattle that they went to uh but they you could tell those dudes learned a lot they implemented a lot of that into you know their campaign on on instagram and, and social media and stuff like that and they just they just taught me a lot you know even just about marketing like a lot of the stuff that we know now about like twitter and instagram it was just happening back then when when i met them and you know when you have a lot of like bigger content creators you know saying that oh you got to do this and you got to do that all of that stuff was being phased out because the algorithm changes like this. It's just like YouTube. And I'm mm -hmm. saying the algorithm is changing just like this. So while they're telling you all old information, you know, Nico and John was on to something, you know, at the start because they were basically they were testing the new stuff without knowing if it was going to work or not. And then all of a sudden it pops off. You know what I'm saying? So they've they've definitely done a lot they've taught me a lot and those are the brothers man that's what's good man so i have to ask because and what you said is, is is real dope because like these conventions and everything as like you're right they do make you hungry mm -hmm. and they make yep. you want to do more it's like upon meeting different people it's like last last year was the first time i went to a convention by myself Kind of like how you went to PAX, mm -hmm. you went to PAX West by yourself. West by myself, yeah. I went to Long Island Retro by myself last year. And mm -hmm. going there to meet up with different people was just a brand new experience in its own. Because it's only, it's like, you're right. You literally have to plan who you're going to meet. And kind of yep. like the same kind of like the same experience you had with Scobo. I had that experience when I met MVG. Like, we saw each other from a distance. Yeah. And it was almost like, you know, what's up? And it's... It's I had I had to control the conversation. We had to control the conversation because we're just nerding out about music for about five minutes, mm -hmm. and then there's people who want to take a picture with them. I'm like, oh, like my bad, I forgot. Like you just yeah. still, <laughs> you're still at, you know at work, so it's really cool, you know, to have that experience to like you see people that you know you could really relate towards, and it's good to still even maintain that contact with them after the fact. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, so with your marketing, because I could definitely, you know, attest your marketing definitely did change and definitely went up a few levels, mm -hmm. you know, since then, like you, you be, for those of you who don't know, and I'm saying this publicly because Chips looks out, Chips will look out on some of the topics we want, we want to talk about, Chips will look out on some of the marketing and even some of the group chill, chill cast meetings that we need to have in order to move forward. So mm -hmm. you want to know who is behind that? That is Chips. Wait, this way. I don't know why my, my camera's reversed, but it's this way. I, I got to do it this way. <laughs> so that's that's all Chips. So with your marketing having being improved, you have something on your channel that I feel is really unique. And I, I'm really looking forward to you doing this more often, honestly. And that's your bargain bin gaming. Ah, yes. We have to talk about it. Okay. We have to talk about it. So <laughs> I right, want you to go you, ahead and tell the people. What do you want to know? Let's tell tell the people about bargain bargain bin and why it's important to YouTube. All right, so bargain bin and you know specifically relating to to gaming, it's important to YouTube because you know you need to know what games are worth your hard earned sixty dollars. You or and I dollars. both, 
right you or yeah <laughs> right so so here's, here's the thing right so this uh this this uh this idea came to me when uh i was where was i one of these one of these big chains it was either best buy or or target and you know they they have their own like uh you know video game section and um one of them had something called a bargain bin sale and they basically had like a bunch of old movies right like right it was like right in front of the 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 playstation aisle and they had a bin that said you know bargain bin sale and it was like a bunch of movies so i was like huh so i'm looking through the movies i'm like okay yo this is a good movie I'll pay $5 for this. Yo, this is a good movie. Yo, $10? I'm going through it. I'm just like, what if I did this with video games? Yo, mm. every time we talk about games, we're like, yo, X, Y, and Z is trash. Don't buy it. Okay, why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And one thing that, you know, when I had gotten that idea, I was also watching, you know, different content creators do their reviews on video games some of these people got like 20 minute reviews i don't got time for that i just want the straight facts as to why i should not buy this game facts so i was like yo i'm doing a bargain bin you know i'm doing a, i'm doing a bargain bin thing for my channel mm -hmm. and every time like you know we've we've been on a chill cast and then you're like yo this game is better like y'all think i'm i'm hating i just be like yo bargain bin like, I'm gonna say I'm gonna save my money. I'm yo, like, and then the thing is, a lot of y'all would have it already. And mm -hmm. then I just be like, yo, bargain bin. Nah, that game ain't. That game definitely ain't for me. <laughs> I'm saying I'll I'll cop it when when the price drops, but I'm not dropping sixty dollars on this. Like, there's there's no way you are gonna catch me doing that, except for if it's Nintendo, man. They don't ever do sales. Like, what they do? They don't. Nah, fam. Bargain bin, they don't do bargain bin sales, man. Forty dollars is not much of a sale. Forty dollars over sixty for a sixty dollar game, Bruh, Because when you add in the taxes, you still spending like the sixty dollars. Sixty dollars so though, you, you, it's not, it's not, it's still, more like forty five, more like forty five. Nah. With it's, taxes. Still not, it's still not much of a difference, man. I'm talking about <laughs> pocket savings, like that, you know, a, a huge pocket savings. I'm not talking about like I should be able to get a Nintendo game that's three years old for five dollars. I mean, I would like to. I, mean, I would like to, but you know, to, yo, well, drop some of these, drop these games for like twenty, twenty five dollars is cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Because, so, so check it, right? Even even with like some of like the Xbox uh, games or the PlayStation games, they could be out for like three or four months, and they they would drop dramatically in price. Yo, bargain bin, that's what's up. And that's and that's the thing. When I started doing bargain bin, you know, because I would say, yo, that game is bargain bin, like. Everybody was like, "Oh, yo, chips is hating." Nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm saying it's, it's better for you, for the consumer, if you bought it at thirty dollars as opposed to sixty. You know what I'm saying? And um, Dragon Ball Kakarot, bargain bin. Right, bargain bin. Right. I'm sure it's a great game, but just hold out for a minute, where you could catch that game for like. Thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars, then boom, bargain bin. That's a bargain bin deal, right? Yes. Mm, I get you. Ahead. I get what you're saying with Nintendo, though. It's like it's like Intel and Apple. Like certain things don't go down. So you're right. Right. It's, right. It's, that's, it's, that's the whole thing. So right. you're right, and it's like to clarify for the for everyone and everything. It's like for chips, he's right. It's like you are better off getting in for your for your best money's worth because paying some of these games at day one, you know. I want to like give a lot more leverage to what Chips is saying because he's absolutely right. A lot of these games that are sixty dollars, you don't need to pay sixty dollars for. Right. Like I'll tell you a perfect example. Right. Uh, Fire Emblem. I never did a review on Fire Emblem. Mm -hmm. I never did an impressions video on Fire Emblem. Uh, Three Houses specifically. Um, you know that game is revered across the gaming community as like the best game ever. Well, not the best game ever, but like. You know, it's it's a great game. You know, it has like this fantastic story. So I'm like, yo, I wanna I wanna experience the story because I got a switch. Sometimes I could play at 
you know, at my job, like on lunch break or at school in between classes, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I can make some headway in, you know, in a lot of these RPGs. And I bought Fire Emblem and I'm like, yo, this is fun for like the first, the first four hours. It was fun. And then, you know, the next day when I'm playing it for another four or five hours, I'm like, all right, it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. The next day, you know what I'm saying? I'm playing it again for another four or five hours. I'm like, you know, I'm really not feeling this. And, you know, and before I was like, yo, this is worth it. And that's the thing. I was like, yo, this is worth it. This is worth it. I changed my opinion on that. And then that's another thing with, with you know, with the whole bargain bin thing that I've been doing. I changed how I do my impressions videos and my actual reviews to be bargain bin impressions and bargain bin reviews. If it's not making it past the impression stage, you're not getting a review because it's not worth it. And I'm going to let you know right up front in the impressions video that maybe you should hold off on this game for right now. Get it when it's cheaper. I think I, I, I like that because I would say, you know, I think a lot of us buy into the hype sometimes. Exactly. Sometimes we get sold into the hype. Like, I can admit I got sold into the hype of Kakarot. I got sold into the hype of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yep. But at the same time, when you have games that are increasing your backlog of games, the games you have you couldn't have beat, you could have wait, waited to beat. And if that, that game dropped in price from the time you bought it and didn't beat the game, then essentially you could have got it for way cheaper and you would have spent a lot less money because you didn't you wasn't going to beat the game in the first place so exactly. i love the fact that you're going through with that i actually want to uh want to want to say like the recent games that i've i've purchased as of late i can say they are worth the time because one, one of them you even bought yourself final Fantasy 7 remake yeah it, yeah it's it definitely gets past you know the impression stage for you like for you because I it, it's so real like games could reach that it that impression stage and it's almost like after the first few days how do you feel yeah and mm -hmm. I I got I got that way when it came to uh believe it or not Charles of Mana a little bit as mm. much as I love that game from the Super NES, and I love like playing it now. After literally like the first three days, I'm like I'm done. I'm gonna play something else right now. And then right. I didn't beat the game until like the end of the week. Right. So I could even and even now doing the end game content is more of a. There's more of a. I'm pushing myself to finish the game. Mm -hmm. More so versus Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm anticipating, yo, what's gonna happen next? Yep. And that's that's the one thing I feel like a lot of games lack these days. A lot of games these days lack pushing you to, the, to that point of wanting to know what's gonna happen next. Right, and that's the thing with with the uh you know the whole bargain bin gaming thing that i'm that i'm doing is because that's that's why i made you know i i had to redo the playlist right the impressions and the reviews mm -hmm. of course i'm gonna do you know my own review on final fantasy 7 i'm not i'm not gonna do this this whole in-depth review like a lot of other other creators because Thank you. i'm 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 looking out for the main points that people are looking for and you know to help them determine if it's worth their money or not like you know so like some of y'all make fun of me for not like really beating games when i get them right i do play a majority of the game and if i don't beat it i'll probably beat it like off stream or i'll get back to it mm -hmm. i'm not gonna beat final fantasy 7 when i do this review because i'm hitting on the main points that people want to know is it fun why is it fun what's so you know what makes it fun you know what i'm saying like I think that's different, I think different. that's a more effective way of doing it doing a review right. if I'm honest with you, if I'm honest. Right. Because because I don't like you know, the average person doesn't have the attention span to sit there for twenty minutes and to listen to, you know, flowery flowery words describing how a game looks. Or regurgitated points over and over again to exactly. get that and to get exactly. that YouTube algorithm stretch mark over certain points. Yeah, exactly. I'm calling y'all out. I peeped it too. I'm not. I'm so, not. I'm not. I'm not hating. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I don't. I don't have anything against those guys. Yeah, I'm not I'm hating. I just see it that that do that. I peep it, and then if if by the the three minute mark you can't tell me, or the five minute mark actually, if you can't tell me why I should get this game, I'm off. 
it's quiet for you, fam. I'm not watching this video no more. Like, and that's I'm why gonna, I'm gonna try to find somebody that can tell me in five to six minutes why I should get this game and show me as much gameplay footage that I need to see to convince me to get it. And that's why that's what I've been doing. I got I got a bunch of games here, right? That I've you know I've done reviews for, and you know I'm I'm straight up telling you, yo, it, it's worth it. Get it. And that's you know, why I want you to do the I want you to do the bargain bin gaming collection more often, man. Because yep. I've noticed that even with the impressions video you did with this one game, it was like a five dollar game that you bought. And oh yeah, home uh, breeder homegrown yes indie game. And I said in the comments, like you saved me five dollars from this. And I it wasn't a long video, it wasn't hard to get through. The video was entertaining, and yeah, I would say it's. I wish more people reviewed videos or gave impressions in that style. Like, show me a playthrough. Show me something that's more outside of your opinion, but more objective that can make me want to say, you know what, this is worth buying or not. Because right. I had, even though you was giving your opinion, there was more objective based things going on that made me say, okay, I wouldn't like this mechanic gameplay wise, or this doesn't really look like it would be that much fun to me. Whereas, most people when they when they do i notice when they're doing reviews and this is not a shot at different people i mean you do what you gotta do you hustle what you gotta hustle and everything mm -hmm. i'm not taking shots but i'm just saying from what i've noticed i've noticed people would do like a montage in fact i've even done it before when it came to when it came to well actually no, let me think let me think about that i don't even think i ever really did game reviews i did album reviews but um that's besides the point. Yeah. What I've noticed uh, with people who, who do mostly reviews, it's mostly a montage of their of, of different gameplays, but it's it's often like shortcut pieces, more like of a cinematic um, compilation. And some parts of it can look good, but it's like it's almost like you don't necessarily capture how fun a game can be. And one of the games that I want to give reference to is sometimes Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild, montage wise, can look great, but yeah. when you actually play the game by itself, that empty open world after a while can get a little bit boring. If I'm real, yeah, it, it can. So, and I've, like I said, I love the art style of the game, and I love the the play through the game. But you see me on stream when I when I stream that when I stream that game, there will be times where. This is the early stages I could actually put this out here. This dude Chips had to text me sometimes to say that I was almost not at all playing this playing some of these games. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like there's there used to be visual proof. I don't even think I even have those videos. But there was visual proof of me. It's almost almost like passing out, like trying to play these games live. Oh man, yo, I'd be at work eating my food, watching Avid on stream, and he'd just be like and I'm like, oh my god, yo, <laughs> yo, you gotta wake so, up, bro. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I've 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 tr I've tried Breath of the Wild. I tried Breath of the Wild and online, and it could be fun under other circumstances and everything, but in some circumstances, it could be daunting to get through. Yeah, so. like like most games, you know. It's I think that. You know that happens with uh, with most games, but some of them they just like really stick out. Breath of the Wild is one of those that like really sticks out. And I love the game. I just have to, I just have to be honest where I am with it. But um, we're gonna go mm -hmm. ahead to our first our first and only commercial break for this one. We're gonna only give one commercial break for this episode because usually when we're packed in a lot of information for the first half, I try to try to keep it just one break for you guys. So we will be back shortly. Peace. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Chips and Sticks. I got my man, Eric, with me. He's uh, the guest cameraman for today. And right now, we're heading into the city to uh, basically experience the uh, the Pokemon release for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I'm pretty sure all of you already know that this is the first Pokemon game on a mainline console. So it's going to be pretty exciting. When we get there, we're going to, you know, ask some of the people that's you know on that line because it's a huge line we're gonna ask some of those people what do they think uh what do they want to see and their overall experience and if they're having fun and we're also 
gonna get a few guest YouTubers on here. You know, some people that you may already know. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and I'll catch you in a little bit. What's up guys, this is your boy Chips and Sticks. As you can see, I'm all ready for the Pokemon release. We're right here outside of the Nintendo New York store, and there's still a few hours left before they do the midnight release. But, just touching base with you guys, it's already a long line. My man Eric, if you could turn around and give him a quick shot. Right now, we're gonna get ready to head inside the Nintendo store and take a look at the newest renovations that they did, especially for the Pokemon release. Keep watching. One thing you can always count on is that Nintendo would have the best manga for their adaptation games. Obviously you can see this is Phantom Hourglass. They got Four Swords, Oracle of Seasons, that was eh. They got Twilight Princess. It was cool, it was cool. But and welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that commercial break. Make sure you guys if not already make sure you are subscribed to beats for breakfast every friday we have new interviews and also make sure you are following chips and sticks because that's the homie and also he has dope content um as yep. of now you are right there on the line of 300 right uh i'm at 301 actually. 301 let's go uh. so let's give him the 400 so thank you guys for uh for supporting but um as chips mentioned earlier he has uh written blog posts before for his for his website and one of those articles i remember really well because he actually pointed this out to me when i was playing Zelda Blade chronicles 2 and that is the over sexualization of women in gaming as well as in um comics mm -hmm. and i wanted your thoughts on do you feel gaming has gotten better in that regard in 2020 because you wrote you wrote that in 2018 i believe yeah, I think I wrote that two years ago. Um, has it gotten better in 2020? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not sure. The only reason why I can say, why well, the only reason why I say that is because, um, you know, as as technology goes along and you can start to like make characters look, you know, more more human, so to speak. You know, people start to fill them out however they envision or not fill them out um in gaming i'm not so sure i want to i want to reference cortana from halo mm -hmm. um you know she's you know they definitely made her a little bit more curvy than when she was on the xbox and the 360 but mm, i mean i'm not sure like the the japanese games they're always gonna do that they they have fan service in their games like it's that's always gonna happen so in terms of like the you know Japanese gaming regard, no, has <laughs> has not gotten better. It's it's been the same. Um, now another thing is, has it gotten better in comics? And that is totally up to the artist and how they want to represent certain characters. A uh, perfect example is uh, Barbara Gordon or Batgirl. In some comics, she has like a full like bodysuit not like a skin tight bodysuit but like it's like leather and it's padded you know in certain areas um she doesn't look sexualized at all but in other comics along the, the same continuity they've you know drawn her differently so it's you know like i said in regards to comics it's all about who's drawing them in gaming you don't really see it too much on like the western games but definitely the you know the japanese games you definitely see it okay so in in terms because what the only thing that i have seen is like you're right in the japanese games when you go into the nintendo eShop, you see some questionable games and it's like okay i'm gonna keep scrolling <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man the dating the dating sim games is just like crazy it's wild it's just wild, dude. Crazy, crazy. 
But um, I was gonna say outside of that though, and just in with gaming in general, it's mm -hmm. like what were what are some innovations in gaming that you have seen? Because you and I, we we grew up, you know, during the Super NES and Genesis days, during yeah. that campaign of gaming. So my question to you is, is like, what innovations have been made in gaming that you have seen growing up that you really value? uh basically 3d gaming because it opens up an entirely different world for you mm -hmm. you know um as as opposed to to back then you know during the, the sega and uh nintendo days where it's like a lot of them were side scrollers right think of like sonic uh think of uh streets of rage like you know classic beat-em-ups mm -hmm. you have uh the metroid you know the metroid game which um it's it's also a side scroll but it's a different type of element you know castlevania uh what else there's i mean there's a whole bunch from that era that yeah some of them might have had like you know good stories behind it but once we hit 3d gaming it just opened up a whole different world because now you can explore the world that you're going to be immersed in and of course as time went on those things changed like or it evolved actually you know and it, it just made the experience a lot better. Even with like action games, you can, um, you know, there's there's more to it now. There's it's it's a, it's gotten a, a lot deeper sometimes in some of the games, um, in terms of how they've been developed, uh, not just story wise, but you know, like I said, how they de how they've been developed and uh, it's it's been whoa one crazy ride, dude, like. When you compare, you know, one of the old games now to something, well, one of the old games to something now, it's night and day, you know? Yeah, compare, like, Mario on the NES or Mario on the Super NES to Mario Odyssey. It's almost like you can see the evolution of Mario. You can even, as a matter of fact, even in 3D gaming, it's almost like they polish 3D gaming so much. Like, Mario on the 64 looked blocky. It was yeah. a, it's a great probably one of my favorite Mario games of all time but the way they have Mario now the way they're doing things now has been just absolutely amazing right and and, and think about it like this right back then in the in the early infancy of 3D gaming to us that was mind blowing we it was like, we were like oh my god yo the graphics is crazy with this it and was. then it's it's pixel <laughs> it's like it's not not pixel it's it's you know polygons all put together you know and what i'm this, saying it is wild you, now when you look at when you look at a game like let's just use final fantasy 7 right when you, at, when you look at final fantasy on the original playstation and you see how blocky they look and how funny they look and you compare it now it's it's hyper realistic you know it, it looks real the characters look like they can actually exist it's just, it's crazy yo and that's and that's the crazy part because it's like I would say Final Fantasy did that, and we even look at some of the um, the newer trailers that we've seen on Xbox Series X. It really yes. looks like really real people, and I don't know, I don't know. And I had you know conversations with you about this. I had mm -hmm. conversations with Nick about this. I have conversations with Leah about this. When it comes to the hyper realism of gaming, it's crazy yeah like with how with how they have came upon and me personally i like my video games looking like video games that's why i appreciate final fantasy i appreciate final fantasy during like the real cutscenes. Cutscenes, it looks like real people but during the actual gameplay it still looks like a game a realistic ish type game but it's like yeah. it's not god of war realistic see i want I want the best of both worlds. I, got I still, I still want the video games that can that can bring us back to you know our childhood days, and I want the hyper realistic looking games to be like, oh my god, I'm in a completely different world. And Red Dead there, Redemption did that a lot, right? Red Dead Redemption does that, uh, like you said, God of War does that because it looks so real. Like when you, especially when you like take some of the pictures and like in photo mode. It looks so real. There's been times where, uh, I think this was on on Instagram, right? 
somebody had taken a picture of, of Kratos' axe. And it looked like somebody was holding a real axe. And the photo mode on, on a PS4, especially like in God of War, it doesn't have that many filters. It doesn't. It's like three bars for you to change the lighting and the contrast and some and the sharpness. And then that's it. <laughs> you know, they do have like they have like four or five filters in it. I'm I'm just going off the top of my memory. I can't really recall, but I know they don't have a crazy amount of filters like what you would find on a smartphone. And somebody, you know, you know, took the picture and of course, you know, put their style on it, but when you look at it, that axe looks like it's real. Like you can hold it. And that's what I that's what I love about about gaming and, and how far it's come now. Okay. So I wanna I wanted to actually now you got me thinking. I was about to ask something, but you got me thinking about other games like Spider Man has a great photo mode. Mm-hmm. Yep. As much as I don't like this game, Kingdom Hearts has a great photo mode. Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> Um, you you will forever be a hater of Kingdom Hearts, bro. You know what? I'm gonna beat it, okay? You I'm know, a, you know what? Start just start it from from beginning to end. Take your I'm, time on I'm, it. I'm gonna I'm I'm beat it now that now that now that I gave the game some time. I may have a different impression of it. I gave it some time. I may have a different impression on it. So I'll I'll sure. beat it. Sure. But um, <laughs> a game that doesn't have photo mode that can really use it actually is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes. I think about it. Yes. Like the. The amount that they have done with that open world is just simply mind blowing. Semi open world, it's it's semi yeah, semi open world. You're right because it's, it's it's a very linear game because they took a very linear part of the game and made that into a game. So yeah, it's a it's a semi open world because yeah. But um, I wanted to uh just further ask you when it comes to just even um hip hop's influence in gaming, like yes. we seen. We've seen this. Some of us may not. Some of us watching, we may not really know notice it so much. But we've seen this even as far as the Super NES and the Genesis days. You know, if you look at the soundtracks to the original Streets of Rage, hip hop oriented, or even mm-hmm. some of Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog three hip hop oriented, or mm-hmm. if you go into PlayStation One, you have games like Parappa the Rapper. It's like, oh would my you? God. And then let's not even talk about Def Jam Vendetta. Or Def Jam yeah, fight for New York, like that's not, I mean, because that's that's like just one hundred percent hip hop with like yeah. wrestling. So yeah. So I wanted to say hip hop's influence on gaming has been prevalent, you know, through the nineties and the two thousands, mm-hmm. but I almost feel like their influence has kind of decreased, in a sense, hmm. in two thousand ten, in the two thousand tens, and even now it's not as prevalent. Okay. In fact, what I've noticed is it's more so um current rap songs on like call of duty and 2k has hip-hop it, it basically what i'm going to ask you is do you see hip-hop as it continues to, to evolve do you see hip-hop being able to be influenced in hip-hop and in gaming as we go along definitely definitely um I mean, we we both we both listen to hip hop and rap mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. So we've seen we've we've even grown up during the sort of like the infancy of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we've seen how much it's evolved and had an influence on pop culture because, like now, you you can't mention one without the other. It's almost as if they're the same, at mm-hmm. least now. So that you know, pop culture carries over into a lot of different things you know it carries over into movies into uh comics is uh video games you know different kinds of of literature so you know hip-hop uh has actually you know been around in a lot of these games through the different styles of music right you have you know just like you said some of the uh, the earlier games and even even games on on like the ps2 you know like Think of the the Grand Theft Auto games, right? Mm-hmm. There's always there's always a radio station dedicated yep. to hip hop, and even one of uh one of like its its biggest titles, uh, San Andreas, right? Is is heavily West Coast influenced. It is a West Coast game, right? In the whole, you know, West Coast era and and energy, and you know and you see they GTA four and five as well, right? And so they have. They have, you know, hip hop channels and, you know, not just channels for the for the music, but like different different things of, of influence. It, it, you know, 
to I think it I think it ranges from the music to how how a character is, right? How they speak, their their mannerisms, stuff like that. It's it definitely influenced them, and you can see it in even some of like you know Nintendo's games now. Um, uh, a lot of different Ninjala. RPGs. Ninjala even. Right. Ninjala's Ninjala's a good one. Um, a lot of different RPGs like Final Fantasy has has a uh, I think they have like a, a hip hop style track. They do. Right? They do right. actually. The the hip hop Chocobo remix. <laughs> right. Right. So and they they have that. I think it might be like two or three songs or something like that that has like a hip hop influence. So it's not it's not going to decrease as time goes on. It's going to increase because hip hop is now or it has been for quite some time mainstream mm -hmm. but it's evolved so much into you know pop culture like i said you just can't you can't mention one without the other so you're definitely going to have a lot more um or you're going to have some more games in the future that that are going to have that that hip hop influence and even some characters you're you're going to have characters that and i, I really don't like to say this uh, but they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna have an like an, an urban style. It just uh, it just feels wrong saying that it's, it's urban because it it refers to to black culture. So it's like, just I mean, just call it what it is, right? It's it's black culture. Hip hop is is black culture that is not uh, restricted to you know black people and people of color, but like everybody can can embrace the culture, and that's what's gonna happen right the more we, we watch well you know the more time goes on you're gonna see more of it in games you're gonna see more of it in you know anime you're gonna see more of it in different movies and cartoons and comics marvel comics they they reference you know hip-hop culture all the time uh in like a few different issues they they reference kanye west Maybe. so it's like so it's like you know it's 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 gonna be ingrained the more that time goes on i love it to be honest with you because now it means that they're going to do it right they're going to represent it right as opposed to like you know back in the day with with anime you know there was drawing you know uh you know there was drawing black characters you know very very funny you know what i'm saying not like haha -ha funny but like racist kind of funny but now they starting to you know to correct it they starting to give them you know the true features they're starting to to include that representation and even in games like like animal crossing there you go you know what I'm saying? They they they're doing the representation right because it's part of the culture and you know it's it's part of the people. Those were real excellent points because it's like the whole time when you're thinking about it, it's when I had a chance to play Ninjala as I mentioned, which you could tell Ninjala and Animal Crossing they had similar influences in terms of with hairstyles and stuff. But what I've noticed, like, even the clothing itself, like, you really nailed it when it comes to the clothing. It's like, it's, there's urban culture, which you said they, they have right, which could be very stereotypical and even racist to a, to a, to a fault. But mm -hmm. there have been some things that I've noticed that they have observed culture-wise in terms of hip-hop that... I could actually, you know, rock with. Like in Ninjala, one of your, uh, every character has like a backpack and they have what is shaped to be almost like a boom box. It's like a stylized boom box, but it's a boom box. And I was like, exactly. that's actually kind of cool. So it's like, um, it's something with gaming and how gaming has been evolving that, you know, it's, you know, it's proper representation. And it's like, as only time goes on, it's, 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 re it's one of the reasons why I kind of like stepped out mm -hmm. of parts of the hip hop culture because not to get too deep into just the hip hop culture and everything, but I feel as though a lot of what we see mainstream wise is corporately controlled now as mm. opposed to when things started more so in the communities, you know, from like the early parts of the, you know, the Bronx, the early parts of like, you know, new of the inner places of New York City and everything before yeah. like labels had their control. Everything started becoming corporately controlled and the the allure of being famous mm -hmm. because before 
before the whole lore being famous and the objectifying of women and all that stuff, that's not what it was about by its roots, but by its roots, it was more so about enjoyment of each other and enjoying who you are as a culture growing up and well, who you are as an ethnic group growing up. And that's, that's, that's just history that a lot of people don't know. It was literally about like, if there was no disco, you know, mm-hmm. there was no disco in the hood. Like hip hop was the disco of the hood for right. growing up for a lot of people. So right. that's that's kind of like what I what I entail. So when you go look at gaming with that and seeing that they're trying to make sure they are not infringing upon being um, offensive mm-hmm. to other ethnic groups is refreshing. It is yeah. definitely refreshing. Yeah, I love it. So, one thing I want to ask is, like, kind of like on the business side of, like, gaming, and I'm going to make this fun. On the business side of gaming and YouTube, what has intrigued you the most? Like, what intrigued you in gaming that kind of made you want to do, like, YouTube differently? Wow, that's... Hmm, that's a good question. I never really, I never really thought about it. Um... Hmm... I try to have at least one question to get to to, to have people stumped on these interviews, man. Yeah, hey, well, you got me. <laughs> uh, I think okay, so I, I think one aspect that uh, that I that I really I really like from uh, the gaming industry is um, you know trying to trying to give back. You know, what I'm saying give back to to the people. Nice. Um, in in whatever way you can you know we we've seen the big three give back in their own way you know with uh with microsoft and i I wrote an article about this before too and i actually did a video um microsoft you know made a a controller for you know handicapped people to play video games um nintendo let um let the guy you know play smash before he, he passed away and sony did a whole bunch of like different campaigns uh they i forgot oh man i forgot what they called it but they partnered with like celebrities to do different charities and they they also let uh you know some people you know play with them like ordinary people that were suffering from certain things you know hang out with them uh steph curry was on one uh they had like a bunch of different celebrities it was a it was a big thing for a while uh snoop dogg was was doing it even when you like even when you play online, um, they had you know these things where you can you can play with the celebrities. I think it was it was also like you know a contest like you know somebody was randomly picked to you know to play with a celebrity, and uh, whatever whatever money was made during that that online play session was donated to uh, a different charity. And I think it was like a different charity every time. It was you know it was really good. You know one thing that that we have to had to always think about is you know the community and you know the people that help you get to where you are that that support you and and want to see you win it'll be good to show them you know how much you appreciate them you know you don't gotta you don't gotta you know spend money and and buy a whole bunch of lavish things for for the people that support you but like a giveaway here and there uh, you know uh, you do this all the time. Community night, you know, just being able to play with some of the people that that support your channel and connect with them is, you know, it's solid. It's, it's, it's solid, and it's, it's it's kind of like that, but in its in its own way. And that's that's something that I, I've I've taken back because I mean I've, you know, I've taken from gaming and and YouTube as as a whole. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was a fantastic answer. Um, as for myself, it would be similar dealing with just like looking at how gaming deals with like just the community themselves and just how if you notice um, how um, Nintendo does. Um, I was I was I, I'm including Nintendo because Nintendo likes doing things community wise when it comes like to their their tree houses and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and when it comes to um 
just like these conventions when nintendo's at an event they try to make it a big deal and they give a lot of value and that's one aspect of gaming that in the gaming world that i really like it's they are about putting your best foot forward and they are about making sure you don't sell yourself short and that's something that makes me want to push my content creation up higher it's almost like don't sell yourself short you know don't right. sell your content short don't think less of your content don't think your content is, is of low value i mean you mentioned before like nintendo doesn't you know price drop some of their products and everything and from a consumer standpoint i totally get how you feel and i respect mm -hmm. it and i and i can agree from a consumer standpoint that that could suck but from right. uh, supplier, uh from a business standpoint from yeah a business and supplier standpoint if you're seeing if you know you're giving something of great value and people are buying it over and over again at the price that you already set Mm -hmm. From a business standpoint, I respect it, and it makes me want to create products that I feel as though that can be timeless, that no matter what, people will say, yo, I want to pay that much money for it. It's not like, I don't, it's, if anything, I don't want to, I don't want to get up to a point where I'm creating products where people wait because mm -hmm. they know that well in three months this will, this will go down in price anyway so i just wait three months so then i'm waiting 90 days to get the bulk of my return because people know that they know me well enough to say well he's going to drop the price anyway so i shouldn't have to I, 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 i'll just wait for this there's no sense of urgency there's no drive to go ahead and buy it and the reason why i feel like nintendo's games do so well is because it's not just because it has a Nintendo seal of approval on it. They take their time with these games. A lot of these games that are not dropping in price, they're a lot of money. In three years time span or less, they sold over 10 million copies, mm -hmm. which is absolutely phenomenal for any from any from any development stand, standpoint. So that's just how I would think for myself. It makes me just not want to sell myself short and for me to make sure I put the best value forward for the consumers on whatever I'm doing. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, going to wrap this up with one last question that I want to ask you. And I usually ask people, uh, you know, what's what advice that you can give, you know, to content creators. But I'm going to switch up and just change it up to this. And I asked this on OJ's podcast, on one I had with OJ. And mm -hmm. that is, if you could give advice to your old self, you look back to when you first started and you now, if you could go back in time to give yourself advice, what would that be? Hmm. If I can go back in time and give myself advice? Mm -hmm. Well, I, hmm. see, that's that's a little hard, right? Because, uh... I'm not I'm not at a bigger level where it's like, oh, I've experienced so much success. I could have experienced more if I had did this differently. You know what I'm saying? But, um, even, but even with the knowledge that you do have even uh, so yeah. yeah. So even even now what I would what I would say um I would I would have to say just enjoy the process and and don't focus too much on the numbers yeah. right because i mean this this did happen happen to me and i'm, I'm pretty sure it happened to you where it, i think it happens to everybody on youtube where they get so engrossed in the numbers you know their sub count you know how many times people saw their video and different stats you know you worry about oh my god i gotta improve this i gotta improve that i gotta improve this and this and this and this and then it hinders you know the quality of the content that you make because it's no longer about doing it because you like it it's doing it because you want that fast track of success um and the thing is that you can get burnt out that way you know i'm saying i i definitely got burnt out i have too you know i i mean yeah like to the point like i, I took a little mini hiatus and i was just like i ain't i ain't doing this no more <laughs> like you know, I'll I'll drop a video here and there, but like I wasn't consistent at all, and I'm I'm trying to be consistent now. Um, but like back then, I just wasn't I just wasn't doing it at all, and I was like, it's no point. Like I'm not I'm not seeing the growth that I'm expecting to see, and and you you can't expect to see growth. Everything takes time, right? 
everybody you know grows into themselves in time you can't you can't rush it you rush it you you just hurting yourself so it's definitely just enjoy the the process of of creating just you know and then also dabble into other things that you know kind of force you to be creative it, it it'll get your mind going so just a just a quick reference earlier today i you know i went out for for a walk you know during this whole pandemic you gotta get some exercise and i had gotten a new camera i have the canon m50 and so i was like i'm gonna go for a walk i'm just gonna take some pictures you know just random things so i'm walking around the neighborhood and i see that a lot of people have these really nice flowers you know in their yard and i was like you know some of them that aren't fenced off is just like you know yeah. borderline sidewalk so i was like you know, let me let me take pictures of these flowers like i don't know nothing about flower photography i was like i just want to take a picture one just to see how good the quality is and you know what the the colors are on his camera and two i want to see if i could experiment and and take you know uh take photos of these flowers from like different angles to like get a good angle make it make it look good and so i did that with one of my neighbors uh they have like a, a rose bush or something like that so i did that and i was like yo this one this camera looks great picture looks great and so i was like you know i'm messing around with the lens and i can get closer to the picture to see you know closer to the flower to see more detail when i take the picture i was like you know let me try some things so i tried you know a bunch of like different angles and and uh focus uh on a lens and, and things like that and i walked around the neighborhood like a good i don't know 10 blocks and i was just taking pictures of, of different things flowers you know um how so one of them has the american flag so like it was it was a little bit of a breeze today so like i took a i tried to get a picture of you know the american flag waving um I, like i just took a picture of, of a bunch of different things and i was like hmm i, I kind of like photography I, you know it's, i like using this camera so you know let me let me try it out some more on a on another day when when everything looks good you know just like today when it was it was a beautiful day outside you know even with even with writing you start to think of different ways to convey your point you know you should always dabble if you're if you're a content creator and you're looking to up your creativity dabble in different things that's gonna force you to elevate your game and your creativity because i feel like we may hit a point if not already that you get stale mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta try different things that's is the growth man you gotta you gotta enjoy the growth and enjoy the process of it all so that's what i would tell uh a past self you know just to enjoy you know, the process just enjoy the process man that's actually really dope advice and um definitely that may end up you guys are hearing this now if you watch this because you're watching the whole video that may be the promo cut for the, for this episode because that was actually really good like enjoy the process get them a small Appreciate clip it clip yeah. of that so all right well thank you once again for coming on to the show man this was a appreciate it yeah super dope interview and um if you appreciate guys it. haven't already make sure you are following chips and sticks over on instagram twitter and on youtube, YouTube. and um you still using your website right i i still have the website up but i just haven't posted anything and again part of enjoying the process and forcing myself to be more creative is i'm i'm gonna start you know trying to get back into writing more articles so well i would say if you i'll put the i'll put the, his website down below uh congratulations on buying your name that's a big accomplishment you. so we're gonna go ahead and close on out of here if you guys have not already make sure you are subscribed and you have turned on notifications for beats for breakfast we'll have more videos up this week uh we may have some on the go episodes coming up so make sure you stay tuned for those and we'll have another interview next friday at 9 a.m eastern standard time if you enjoyed this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button and most of all most of all you make sure you share this <laughs> with a friend this is avadon and chips and sticks and we are out Peace, Peace.